Before we begin, at any point during the playback don't hesitate to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. It will help us reach more people and grow this channel. Did you know that the director May Bob Khan took the title of the film from a book with the same name Mother India by Catherine Mayo? The movie begins with now an epic shot of a woman, Radha, holding and kissing the earth in her hands. In the background, we see a bunch of tractors plowing the fields. Straight away we know this is going to be a movie on farmers with the settings of a village in India. Radha, now an old woman, is approached by a bunch of villagers to inaugurate a newly constructed canal in the village. This tells us, that Radha is a respected woman of the village. Hesitant, she nonetheless accepts the invitation. While getting garlanded during the inauguration, her memories flash back to her wedding day, the day she got married to Shamu, a farmer in another village not too far from where she lives. She has vivid memories of getting separated from her father's home. She remembers the day as yesterday, her long journey back to her husband's village, riding till the dawn, her first step into her new home, her first night with her husband and her fate and devotion now in the hands of her husband, as seen by her fall at her husband's feet. At her new home, on the very first day, she overhears a bunch of women in the courtyard talking about rumors of her husband and mother-in-law taking a huge debt for the wedding against their lands. Her mother-in-law, hiding from others, tells Radha the truth that they have taken a loan from the village moneylender, Kushilala, that they intend to pay back after sharing four seasons of harvest with the moneylender. This is an important moment in the movie because the whole movie hinges on that plot. Radha, being conscientious, realizing how the wedding has put her new family under the burden of debt, takes off her wedding jewelry. This shows us she has strong moral bearings. Keep in mind the movie was made in 1957. It was ahead of its time in casting a woman in the lead role. Did you know that it was the very first submission to the Academy Awards in 1958 for Best Film in Foreign Language category? It lost the award by just one vote that year. Determined to help her family pay back the debts, Radha wastes no time in getting to work. Next day, when Samu finds Radha without her wedding jewelry, he is angry. He chides her for taking them off. He convinces her that the rumors about the debts are not true. Even if it were true he intends to fully pay back the debt in four years, after every harvest. And that she should not worry. He puts the jewelry back on her himself before heading to the fields. Later, when Radha is on her way to the fields with the food for Samu, along with her best friend she meets Kushalala, the moneylender, sitting under a tree. He ominously warns Radha to be careful not to fall with that pitcher made of mud on her head. Radha's friend retorts back with a sharp comeback reminding him it's because of him that no woman in the village has a pitcher on her head made of bronze. Back on the field, Samu and Radha share some intimate moments. Samu tells Radha his plans for their future, how he intends to fulfill his dream of having four boys, one boy behind every bull plow, working on his 25 bigas of lands. He asks her to give him a boy with the passing of every harvest. When he sees a man and a woman quietly listening to his intimate moments with Radha, laughing still, he chases them out. Cue to the first harvest season, while harvesting the yields Radha falls down. Samu discovers he is about to be the father of his first child. Things are progressing as planned. Samu can't control his joy and happiness. He comes out of his home and starts giving away some of his harvest away to people in the village. In comes the Bami of Kushalala, asking Shamu not give away his share of the harvest away to random people, he tells him to give away only his share. When Samu's mother confronts Kushalala about the matter, Kushalala reminds her that he is entitled to three quarters of the harvest as per the debt agreement. This comes as a shock to her who refuses to acknowledge his share of claim to the harvest. Kushalala threatens to go to the panchayat, the village council asking them to take care of his interests. Before the judgment, Kushalala reminds everyone to consider his claims and not to forget who takes care of them when they need money, effectively buying the judgment in his favor. When the loan paper is read out it affirms the position of Kushalala. The mother had signed on sharing three quarters of the harvest as interest till the amount is paid back in full. This devastates Shamu and his mother, who thought the debt would be cleared by giving him three quarters of the harvest for four seasons. Shamu's mother reminds Kushalala what they had agreed on verbally and what is written on paper is not the same and curses him for lying to them. Kushalala doubles down and pleads the village council to make Samu sign the loan paper too as he does not expect the old woman to live for long.
Samu's mother pushes back and is adamant that she will rather die than see her son sign on her mistake. Thus begins the indefinite indentured servitude and drudgery for Rada and her family. They work hard before every harvest but at the time of the harvest, they are left with nothing, only barely enough to survive on. Rada and Shamu now have four children, all boys, who also work with them. In one of the foreshadowing moments, we see one of their sons, Birju, who plays an important role as we discover later, refusing to give the harvest to Kushalala, calling him a thief and running away with his umbrella. Kushilal still manages to charge them for his umbrella despite getting it back. Flustered with Birju's behavior Rada takes him to the village school for education. There, Birju is found to be a nuisance to other students and even slingshots the teacher. Birju is not fit for education. He gets punished at home and denied food. That probably makes him even more rebellious. We will see the character development of Birju who plays a critical part later in the movie. If you are enjoying the video so far, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for more in future. As a result of giving away most of their harvest year after year, Rada household does not store much food and are forced to go to Kushalala to give them food. Kushalala asks them to give him more collateral for more advances, or else he won't help them. He asks them for anything, even household utensils if they have nothing of value to pawn. In one of the touching moments in the movie, when asked to bring bronze utensils for pawnage, Birju holds them closer and refuses to part with them, not for anything. He breaks down when his mother reminds him that they, his mother, father, brothers will likely go hungry on an empty stomach if he does not acquiesce to the Lala's demands. This is a classical playbook of asset stripping by the moneyed classes. This particular moment exemplifies the total moral bankruptcy of the lending classes and their complete detachment from the social obligations. Some time later, Rada suggests to Samu that they should work on the remaining five bigas of the fields they have that are still not plowed. Samu reminds Rada those fields are hard lands, not meant for plowing as they are full of stones and big boulders and that he will likely lose his bull from exertion. Rada tells Samu she still intends to work the fields alone even if he does not join her. Shamu joins her, and as rightly predicted, one of the bulls dies. Back home, Sukalala tries to push more debt on them, this time for a new bull. We see how Samu is slowly beginning to lose his mind. He comes to choking Sukalala. The family pulls together and finds the money for new bull, even if it means selling some of the family jewelry. Next day, he still tries again to clear the boulders but this time, he breaks his arms and looses them altogether. This is the most tragic moment in the movie and you can't help but feel sorry for him. Kushilala keeps bumping into him constantly reminding him he still has a debt obligation to him lest he forgets. He questions his ability to make payments, now that he has lost both his hands. He further humiliates him calling him as good as a beggar for being reliant on his family for food and shelter. Not wasting the opportunity, Kushilala even takes away his remaining bull as a payment for his loan hanging a bell on his neck, meant as the lowest ranked man in the society. Haunted by the echoes of taunts and humiliations by Kushalala, Samu had had enough. One night, while everyone is sleeping he decides to leave his family then be a burden on them. He says his goodbyes quietly. This is the last time we see Shamu in the movie. What happened to him is a matter of some interesting theories among the fans of the film. When Rada wakes up in the morning and does not find Shamu by her side she panics. She looks for him outside but to no avail. He is gone for good. Tell us how you think about the actions of Shamu in the comment section. Should he have done what he did? Leaving his family in the middle of the night? We will love to hear from you. This really breaks your heart. You real feel sorry for Rada and his family. Tragedy after tragedy with no hope of an answer to their plight. Soon after, the mother also dies of shock. There are other though small but equally revealing scenes sprinkled throughout the movie like this scene. Did you know Sunil Dutt and Nargis fell in love during shooting this film and married after the movie finished? Moving on, this leads us to the final blackmail in the movie though of a different kind. Seeing the plight of Radha, Kushalala walks in. With the bulls and makes the pitch for Radha herself, as his wife, he promises to give back all the lands, all 20 bigas, two bulls and to forgive the principal amount if Radha agrees to be his wife. Radha warns Kushalala against bargaining for her. She reminds him that she and her dignity are not for sale. Kushalala reminds her the consequences of refusing his proposal. She asks him to leave. 
However, now when a storm runs through the village damaging all the crops and rendering the lands non-cultivatable for at least two years, Rada along with her children are forced with the real prospect of dying of starvation. Even then, Rada asks her children not to accept the foods offered by Kushalala. She seems to be in a trance. Kushalala asks her to reconsider. Then, Burju faints and collapses on the ground. This wakes her up and breaks the trance and forces her to think about her children. She goes to Kushalala's place to surrender and beg food for her dying children. Kushalala begins celebrating in what is truly an horrendous moment in the movie. Radha asks Kushalala to not take away the statue of Goddess Lakshmi. She wants her to see what she has done to her. She breaks down refusing to sacrifice her children even if it means losing her dignity. Then suddenly, almost as a miracle looking at her marriage necklace, a sign of devotion to her husband, Radha changes her mind. She begins to believe her husband will return. She begins to believe Goddess Lakshmi saved her marriage, and will save her children too. This drives Sukalala mad and makes him go after Radha with a vengeance. He loses his senses completely. Radha has no choice but to beat his ass some sense into him and loses his tail. Outside she finds some lotus roots that she offers to her children and eats it too. We are now far into the future, we see the town in full blossom at the harvest time. Radha is now all joy with her children fully grown up as adults. Two of her children Ramu and Birju are with her. When Sukalala comes to collect his share of the harvest this time there is a surprise waiting for him at the millet pile. Birju asks for the paper that entitles Kushalala to his cut. Sukalala asks his posse to give him the paper. Thankfully, before things truly turn into a Tarantinonian episode of Kill Kusalala Volume 1, Radha intervenes and chides Sukalala for being a Chindakor and his depravity to shoot his son for a handful of millets. Sukalala changes his tunes and shouts at his posse for bringing a gun to a food fight and asks them to collect his share and go away. But Birju comes in hot and refuses to give anything to Sukalala. His brother, Ramu stops him. Birju does not give up. He comes back with fire and refuses to give anything, and burn everything to the grounds. He again demands to see the paper that entitles their harvest to Kushalala. Kushalala hands him the paper. Birju realizes he can't read. He asks his mother to read but she also can't read. He asks others in the village too. It turns out no one in the village can read. Birju asks one of them if they all signed it without reading. To which the villager says even his grandmother signed without reading. Looking for an answer to what is written inside the dead agreement, Birju runs to the only place that can give him that answer, the school. There he finds Pandit Lalita Prasad's daughter literally an angel in disguise. Birju breaks down thirsting for knowing what black magic is hidden inside the knowledge in Kushalala's books that made his family loose everything to him. She shows him the real magic of accounting and compounding interest. She tells him that the real magic inside Kushalala's book is that they have been paying the interests on the loans, and not the principals back and that Kushalala has collected many times over what he lent. With his eyes open, Birju vows to take back not just his land but everyone's land from Kushalala. Did you know the role of Sunil Dutt was first offered to Dilip Kumar? But he refused the role as he had just romanced Nargis in two of his films, Mela and Babul, so declined. Since his childhood, Birju is known as a bad boy, a miscreant in the village. He finds time to get high, break a few pitchers, steal millets, get even more high, throw some god coins at Kushalala, and yes flirt with a few girls. When Birju while playing holy tries to take away his mother's bangles from Kushalala's daughter villagers try to stop him. Radha too joins them. She beats him hard not thinking of him as her child but a petty criminal. This is a hint of what is to come. Birju does not stop there. He even threatens to kill Kushalala, openly challenging him in front of the whole village. That leaves with no choice but to punish him and throw him out of the village. Villagers join Kushalala in throwing him out of the village. But Radha begs the villagers not to throw him out and promises if he ever teases girls in the village she will kill him herself. The villagers agree to her. Meanwhile, Birju steals a gun from a local money lender. When he tries to hide it, Radha sees him. Birju tells her the plan. He is going to kill Kushalala for good. She begs him to throw the gun away. Birju asks her mother to let him to what he needs to do. Even if he dies, the village will be better off without Kushalala. 
Her mother tells him using gun will not solve the problems only hard work will do that. Radha calls Ramu to help her take away the gun from Birju. They manage to take it away using their all strength. This drives Birju even more violent. He hurts his brother Ramu. Pushes away his sister-in-law and takes the gun from his mother. When she tries to stop him he beats her hard and drags her away. Birju reaches the house of Kushalala and goes after him. On the roof, he is shot at by one of his guards. He falls down and has to run away. Radha fearing for his life hides him under straws remaining after the harvest. When Kushalala comes with the whole town to catch him, Radha stops him. Kushalala tells the villagers to burn down the straw piles to make him come out. There is now a complete mayhem in the village. Everyone is losing their minds. Kushalala had managed to turn everyone in the village against Birju and his family. Looking for Birju she had earlier hidden under the dry straw piles, Radha gets lost in the middle of the fire. When Birju comes out of the straws, he hears the voice of his mother shouting his name. He realizes his mother is lost in the fires looking for him. So, he begins to look for her. They both start looking for each other as the fire grows bigger around them. Birju finds her mother and brings her out. He takes her to a nearby river to give her some respite from the burning fires. In the background we see their fields burning. Kushalala has managed to burn everything they have to the grounds. If you are enjoying the video so far, Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for more in future. Sometime later, after running from the village, Birju is now a professional decoit. He loots wedding parties on the roads. When he hears about Kushalala's daughter's marriage he decides to loot it and kidnap his daughter. But Kushalala fools him again. Birju finds his old friend, the teacher, in the carriage, and not the daughter. Kushalala goes to Radha and begs her to stop Birju from kidnapping her daughter. Now, only she could stop him as his mother. When Ramu tells her not to do anything she slaps him too. This shows a real character of Radha. She will never approve a crime even if it is done by her son. She promises she will stop Birju even if she has to kill him. The whole village is under the martial law it seems. Everyone is out with their guns, only to stop Birju. Outside. When Radha meets Birju on his way to the wedding she pleads him to stop doing what he is about to and leave the ways of being a decoit. But Birju does not listen to her. He is now on a mission. He hears the calls of his comrades in the distance and leaves her. He is too far gone now to listen to his senses. He arrives at the wedding with a bang of a gun. Kushalala tries to run away but does not get too far. Birju asks him to hand over the bangles that he took from his mother as a payment for their loans. Kushalala hands him the stash. He appeals to Birju to remember the old days when he was a child and always created nuisance for him. He was about to find some more of that soon. Birju takes the bangles. Out in the hall, there is now a pile of accounting books that Birju drenches with the petroleums that he is going to burn. But when Kushalala gets surrounded by the band of decoits one of them stabs him, leaving him dropped for dead. Birju then collects his daughter from the wedding stall and tries to run away. On the roads, he finds his mother waiting for him with a gun. This is the climatic and legendary moment of the movie. When Birju tells her she is not going to shoot her own son, Radha tells him not to test her. She is a woman, so is the daughter of Kushalala. She represents Mother India. She can kill a son to protect the dignity of a woman. Birju challenges her to shoot him if she can. He is not going to back down. He tries to run away but does not get far as Radha shoots him cold dead with her gun. It turns out she is good with the gun after all. Seeing Birju wounded Radha runs towards him. She is overcome with the emotions. She just realizes she just shot her own son. As Birju finally lets go of the bangles he dies in the arms of his mother. This is the classic ending of the movie that made the whole nation sad. Let us know if you liked the video in the comments section. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bells for more in the future. Until next time, watch out for more popcorns and spoil alerts.